train them and then they do the shit anyway. I don't know. Cats are kind of. My cat's kind of a psychopath, but you gotta love her. Hey no, guys, yeah, what's up? Welcome back to Digital Diving, the proper oh, that weed game stuff top before show. You. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Digital Diving, the proper gaming talk show. It's your boy, Mr. Monkey. Joining me is SG. Saying Kush. What's yep. up? Yep. Today, uh, we're diving into... Uh, okay, this isn't a huge topic, but it's a topic that has been floating around. It was dropped, I guess, today. Uh, by the way, we're recording this on Wednesday, so it was dropped Wednesday. But um, uh, IGN came out and reported this first, of course, because it's IGN. But... E3 is actually coming back in 2021, which is uh, okay. Odds are it's going to be a digital experience, um, but I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Jules is super excited because he's an E3 fanboy. But uh, <laughs> um, the general, the general thought process along, or the general uh, consensus around a lot of gamers, at least online, is that E3 has kind of run its course. It's kind of not really relevant anymore uh, for any number of reasons. But, um, uh, yeah, E3 is coming back in 2021. That is confirmed. Uh, Jules, what do you think? So, I want to take it back to the 90s where E3 started off as a platform for developers to really explore what they were doing, to explore what they were going to put out. And back then, they still had deadlines. They still had things that they were trying to push out. They were trying to get things going. Gaming was not as well respected as it was yeah. back then, you know, as it, as it is now. So, like, they were really amped about trying to get games out and trying to develop things in a way that made it more plausible to fans. And there were things even back then that got delayed year after year. Oh yeah, year after that, year, del you know? Game delays is not new. <laughs> it's not. Gamers um, are so just entitled people, nowadays. <laughs> for people to say that E3 is irrelevant, I think is kind of, it's not really correct. Because at the end of the day, you have all these other developers, you have all these publishers putting out their own type of E3. Like last year, they put out a F retro FPS 3D um, for a lot of games coming out that were retro FPS. You know, and then you have PlayStation putting out their PlayStation. Well, I um, think that I think that right there is why gamers are saying that E3 is null and void now. It's run its course. It's, they don't need it anymore because all these developers are doing their own showcases. You had the state of play that PlayStation right. was doing up until the launch of the PS5. They haven't done it in a while. I kind of miss it. But uh, and then you also had the uh, Marvel's Avengers War Table that they did every so often, which we covered. And uh, you can go check those videos out, along with the State of Play videos. There were some of the first ones that we covered, actually, on the channel when we came back. But, um, but yeah, like, E3 being canceled for 2020, like, it was kind of a big deal because it was totally different. It was totally like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Because there was just this giant void in game. Like, that was one... That's, E3 is always one of the biggest most anticipated events of the year. Right. But lately, E3 has become this cringy mess that, I mean, kind of like the Super Bowl, more memes are created out of it more than anything else. I mean, I mean shit, that Keanu Reeves meme, You're Breathless, is still circulating. <laughs> like, I mean, you can also say that about the Game Awards as well. Like, when something gets to have such a amount of credibility, then it gets tarnished with a lot of mainstream things that... No. Don't mind everybody, Pat. He has to do... I apologize. My cat is jumping on stuff she's not allowed to be on. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, um, what were you saying? Sorry, my... No, yeah. So at the end of the day, I feel like E3 is still very much important because here's the thing. The same thing happened with the Game Awards, where when the Game Awards first started off, I don't know if you remember, it was just Game Award, yeah. Game Award, Game Award, Game Award. Then the last two or three years, there were ads, there were bands playing, there were skits, there were people saying all these kind of needless speeches. And it's just like, we don't we don't yeah, need it's a three become, hour event. It's, it's become like a the whole hour. thing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. She's going to do it again. Stop. Gotcha. I know you saw it. Stop. 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 Stop
just wanted to be up here because of this. I don't know why. It's not good for you. I'm sorry. I will edit that out. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, no. The Game Awards has really just really become like a secondary E3 type of thing because you get the game, you get like award, 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 a bunch of announcements and trailers, award, 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 and more announcements. I'm just like, oh my god, okay, cool. Like, I don't know. I don't everybody's know. everybody's trying to be E3. But E3s will always be the central staple of yeah, game announcements. You know, that's all. I think you that's also another. another you know, it's going to be an E3. Yeah, so but, saying, if you want to announce something big or major, it's going to be an E3. A console, console is going to be an E3. You know what I mean? Yeah, but at the same time, like I think because all these other events are doing legitimately the same thing that E3 has done, mm -hmm. it's even more against e3 to come back like they don't really need it you know it's so, just kind of like it's kind of like these these other events are going to happen no matter what so what's the point of e3 i think so all right so here's my reasoning for the return of e3 i feel like e3 is a place not only for a central place for game developers to converge but it's a place for gamers to converge you have so many people that are disconnected by internet you know place that we live you know things like that but then when e3 comes everybody comes in from all different That's places true. you know it's a it, is a, it, it is a great family. community building event for sure definitely yeah. definitely i i dig that it's really really great for gamers to come together but at the same time Lately, E3 has just become this super cringy event that doesn't really show as much as it says it does. Like, for example, when they put out the trailer for The Last of Us, it was like they tried to make an experience and this whole thing because they had the live music and they had the trailer mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like the majority of the people who were watching it were at home, not seeing it live. So that's already taking away from that. And if this actually does go digital, it's going to be kind of the same thing. But I don't know. The year before, they did the, uh, what was it? The trailer for, oh, um, not Rust 2. It was, it was that um, post-apocalyptic survival, not survival game. It was kind of, it was kind of like uh, Borderlands, but they had a game come out like forever ago and then they released a sequel to it. They had like that, uh, the glaive that you threw around a lot. I forget the name of the game. Risk of Rain? What? No, not Risk, Risk of, Rain? of Rain. No, they had a glaive that you, uh, it was like in the, in the original game. What the hell is that game? Uh, hi. <laughs> no, 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 where was it? Oh my god, Dark Void. I remember that game. Um, oh god, I don't remember the name of the game. Frustrating. But anyways, they uh, they released the sequel trailer with this dope-ass song. And then at E3, they had the band come in and play that song live. And it was one of the most cringiest events I have ever seen in my life. Like, mm -hmm. it was just so weird. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that song is cool, but nobody knows who you are, and your performance is just weird. And let's be honest here, okay? Game developers, they're not known for their live, uh, like, charisma, their in-person charisma. Okay? I mean, they live behind a computer screen, okay? They don't interact but that's also with the problem. anyone. No, th that's the problem with E3, because they, you get all these developers coming out, talking to, like, millions of people, and they they just come across as like, ooh, okay, bro, you should really stay in your mm -hmm. mom's basement. Oh, so I got you on that. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the last two years, you have seen how many reports about threats, about people threatening families, threatening people with developers. Why? Because yeah, they don't know fair. these people. They don't see these people. E3 gives the developer the chance to say, hey, 
look at me. This is the person making your video. This is the person that you see in that credit after the game that you don't pay attention to and you think doesn't exist. This is me. I have a family. I have people that I love. I am no, sitting there working no, 12 to 24 hours at a time trying to make this for you. And then you want to threaten my life because you don't like the game? Yeah. What? <laughs> So E3 does serve its purpose, I believe. I believe it is a very central way to gain some humanity. And I think that's what I'm really trying to say. You gain some humanity. You see other gamers. You see yeah. developers. You see the people behind the scenes. But making you also, you also you get all you also get all that with all of the like console developer uh, live events. Oh my god, my cat's just knocking everything over. Uh, <laughs> live events that they've put out on YouTube and streamed live. This I mean, in 2020, not so you got you had like the the state of play where you saw like a lot of the uh, the IP developers coming up and talking about their stuff, talking about their games, and then you saw the Xbox uh, showcase that they did. You got to see the Ubisoft s showcase that they did, and like it was just instead of having the deadline of E3, they got to schedule this whenever they wanted to schedule it, and they got to take their time and curate all the stuff that they wanted to show. My biggest issue with E3, especially lately, is that a lot of these developers feel like if they don't show anything at that year's E3, they're going to miss out on a buttload of basically free publicity because they get to show their stuff off to like millions of people. And then like for case in point, Cyberpunk 2077, like... To, com to combat that, I mean, to combat that, people don't just use e3 to announce their thing they can do it on any social media platform now yeah the but they is, e3, now yeah e3, e3 used to be the only way to say that something was going to be put out exactly. but now they can use any media platform but at the same time it's less official because you have Not really. plenty Not of game all. developers there you have plenty of game developers on plenty of media platforms hey this is going to come out march 25th put out a tweet fucking a week, sorry, uh, a week later and say, hey, delayed. Hey, delay like the E3 isn't any different from any other social media platform. It gives it more of an official stamp of what's going to come out because now people look at E3 like, all right, if we say that we're going to come out with something at E3, more than likely you have to actually come out with it. But when you put it exactly. on social media, that's, you're like, hey. Exactly. That's exactly it though because – then you get these developers who rush their products because they announced at E3, it's coming out this time. Shit happens, and either the game's not done, there's a lot of bugs, it's not polished, and they feel like they're forced to release that t game. Again, one of the other case in points, Anthem. It was announced at E3. It was not ready to be released when it was. They released it anyways because, one, it's EA. Two, it was announced at E3, and they had that responsibility. And then, I mean, you, get, and then you get stuff like this happening. So, and you get stuff like Cyberpunk happening. Now, Cyberpunk so went back into, like, hey, you know, we're just right. going to delay it, delay it, delay it. No, right, right. But still, like, if you announce but something my, at a big-ass mm -hmm. event like that, it's almost like they waste money on that entire spot. Because, yeah, cool, we got to see a trailer or something like that. Also, not to mention, a lot of those trailers that developers show at E3, a lot of them are fake. A lot of them are purely animated trailers. They don't show anything actually in-game. Cinematic trailers are almost all fake. Let's be honest here, okay? This is not new. But if you didn't have that E3 deadline, these developers wouldn't have that crunch, that deadline to have to just release something just to show something. You know what I mean? But I will, I will tell you thing. this: at the, at the end of the day, the E3 doesn't matter. The E3 is just a platform. Things carry the same weight no matter what outlet you use. So exactly. if Cyberpunk, if if CD yes. Projekt Red said, "Hey, Witcher Three is going to come out December second, twenty sixteen," yeah, that's just I don't know what the real date was, but that's yeah, just a yeah, just yeah. For the, example. You know, so if they said that, <laughs> everybody would still be on the fence and carry the same weight with their words if it was on Twitter, E3, Snapchat, like it doesn't matter. As long as it's an yes. official platform, Except they will still carry that crunch and that weight. 
So yes and no because at E three they have to pay for their spots. All right. I was going to so say that they're... next. I understand the the monetary value of it. Yeah. I understand. Like it's less money to, but then it's less money to do that at E three than to you know. It's so much less money if you just yourself. exactly if you want to just do yeah. your own big ass event. You can do that. We saw that last year with Marvel's Avengers War Table. They did these events on their own. They didn't have to pay shit for it. They just live stream a bunch of their guys talking about the game, showing off the game, and oh, the game sucked. But they, you actually got to see more of the game as it was being worked on. You know, you and you look forward to the next episode of whatever they did, even. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, they did the Night City Wire where they were building up to the release and everything. I honestly, I prefer that kind of stuff over one giant event filled mostly with bullshit. And then a couple big announcements here and there. The majority of E3 is filled with worthless bullshit. Let's be honest here. Like I mean, the, the main hunk well, I- of E3, no one gives a shit about it. They only give a shit about the big game announcements, which can be done on YouTube Live at any point in any time ever. I mean, but here's the thing. The the best part about E3 from when it started to now, it wasn't about the game. It was about the cultivation and it was about the gathering of gamers. Because oh, back, yeah, yeah. back then in the 90s, gamers were considered outcasts, losers. Degenerate. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing playing that fucking game console? You should be outside playing. You should be doing No, this. yeah, you yeah, I get that. it. It's a, it's a collection of people of like minds. I totally get that, and I am 100% in support of that. You can't but get rid of the humanity, is what I'm saying. True, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I'm just saying that E3 has not, hasn't been that kind of event in a while. All right, it's been a money grab mainly by big game developers. And that's about it. Like it hasn't really been a community based thing in quite some time. And most of the stuff is looked at so critically that it doesn't even matter if it was community based or not because gamers are, you know, one of the most toxic communities out there. <laughs> Economy and the everything else with politics and everything like that, how something hits home. Like, if you want to talk about, like, look, yeah, it takes monetary value to get E3, but, you know, people are so critical because of the fact that they're spending money for this. If video games were free, you know, the video game community wouldn't be so toxic. I can bet you that. If, yeah. if everything was free, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be guns and roses no matter what came out. You know, people will be more open, more happy to play every and anything. You know, oh, but when you sure. put a monetary no, value on it, you know, then then that's where things get kind of monkey. So, so guys, what do you? What, what, yeah. oh, sorry. All right, finish up. Finish up. What's up? So yeah, I was just gonna say you can't get rid of E3 because it supports the humanity and it supports everybody coming together from all kinds of cross countries, nations, people that are isolated, people that are lonely. They crave the stuff. They need the stuff. So That's fair. I feel like you shouldn't get rid of it. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that E3 is, like the return of E3 is something awesome? Do you think that E3 is kind of on its course and we don't really need it anymore? Uh, what's your reasoning for whatever you think? Let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below. You already know our opinions. I am mainly against it but I, I i wouldn't mind to see it as a digital event from now on my cat is behind my computer <laughs> hi oh, maybe uh, like one or two in the future and then that's yeah, that you know? yeah i don't know but anyways guys let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below if you like the video please hit that like button if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet please do so we lost two i don't know why i'm sad Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share it with all your friends, family, strange cousins over in England, your uh, customer service rep who is from India, probably. <laughs> share it with him, share it with everyone, share it with your cat. I don't care. Get us out there. We love your faces. Thank you so much for watching. Stay excellent. See you guys in the next dive. Woo!